today we are going to talk about creating responsive columns and making sure they're equal height all the time. I know many of you who watch this have run into this issue where you, this is I got the same site here. This one here is on localhost, my my uh, computer. This one here is on the web server. This is, I'm building these on .NET Nuke but this actually applies to anything if you notice it, the issue with the vertical heights on responsive columns it can be quite tricky see it can be really tricky to uh, get them all to line up and I haven't finished my media queries so just ignore the squishing together but I just I, 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 start, I, I worked on this last night or yesterday I actually fought with it it was it was a challenge but this see the solution here on the server and again ignore the squishing together I haven't wrote my media queries yet to address all that stuff but you notice the columns remain the same no matter what and the solution was simple it just took me four hours to find it the first thing I did was I went to CSS Tricks and went through, they, I don't know, I got four or five different methods here of doing it and none of them work. None of these methods, keep in mind this article is written in October 2010 so it is a little bit dated. None of these worked until I stumbled up on the last one. Flexbox method. Now I was like, Flexbox? Where have I heard that before? Well, about three weeks ago, I was over at WordPress TV listening to one of my favorite Lynda.com authors talk about Flexbox, the future of responsive uh, design. He goes into great detail, and I'll leave it, you know, I'll leave, the, uh, I'll leave these sources at my website. But anyhow, he goes into great detail about Flexbox. And I remember watching it and saying, you know, that's pretty neat, but, you know, I, I, I don't have a, a need for it right now. And, you know, as designers, we're always learning. Every day is a learning curve, it seems like. <laughs> and uh, so I really didn't have time to look into it any more than watching that video. And, uh, but I, I stumbled and I said, like, man, I have heard about this. So I didn't actually use what he put here because it says... Uh, if you notice here, it says uh, Firefox falls apart. Remember, this is a dated video. Fire, it no longer falls apart in the uh, later browsers of Firefox. But that one little sentence there got me to do a little further research. And there's not a whole lot of information on the internet about Flexbox. And what you do find, most of it's actually dated and has the same Firefox issues. So I searched around YouTube and, and the videos I was seeing wasn't making any sense either. And I read some blogs and those weren't making any sense either. But one blog I was reading pointed me to CodePen. And I'll leave this URL uh, at my site as well. CodePen has HTML markup. You notice the very first one here is equal height columns. Now, I am new to this. I'm going to preface everything. And the only thing I messed with was the very first block of code here but they got equal height plus width columns uh, equal height width columns with margins equal height columns with margins in multiple rows equal height columns with margins in multiple rows and variable number of boxes and a variable number of boxes so it's like five different methods here so what I did was I went I copied this first one I picked through the CSS found all the classes and use those and played with it last night and it's amazing how simple and how easy this solution is so stay tuned and at the end of this video I'm gonna give you talk about these web kits a little bit I have I tested it out in the latest Firefox Chrome and Internet Explorer none of them require web kits but earlier versions may so we'll talk about the web kits too at the end of this video and if you get as, as excited about this method of uh, making responsive columns equal height and how easy it is you know like I said there's not a whole lot out on the internet right now about it 
that I was able to find that makes sense anyway. How about sharing this video with somebody or liking it, leaving a comment, uh, subscribing, or all of the above. You know, that, that, uh, get, this, get the word out about this. So we're going to talk about Flexbox is nothing more than a CSS3 uh, property called Display Flex. And uh, I got the outline of what we're going to do here. We're going to do uh, HTML markup. We're going to make the initial old-fashioned way of making responsive columns. And then we're going to add some min and max widths, or heights, excuse me, min and max heights. Just to demonstrate how you can solve the issue on the big screen, but it's not going to work as you shrink your screens down. Then we're going to add flex, and we're going to do a couple little demonstrations, and then we're going to talk about the web kits. So let's get started with the HTML markup. Now you can pause the video and get this. I'm not going to type it all out. It's not a whole lot anyway. But anyhow, let's go over what we got here. Uh, first thing I did was I created a wrapper for three columns. I'm doing doing similar to as on the site here, three columns. Okay. I'm not going to go into, I used absolute positioning to overlay these columns on a slider. I'm not going to get into all that. It's not, not what this video is about. And like I said, the stuff I tried at CSS Tricks, none of it worked. I don't know, maybe that was a conflict with absolute positioning or what. I don't know why I couldn't get any other older methods to work. But the Flexbox definitely works. So as you see, again, we're going to look at the problem one more time. There's the problem. Once you start shrinking the window down, equal height no long, is no longer applicable under the old-fashioned way. Even though I have a min and max height, now you could set a max height. That's not necessarily something you probably want to do. Or you could set a height, excuse me, not a max You could set a strict height. That would solve the problem. But, you know, what good is that for responsiveness, right? And so the solution, again, you notice with Flexbox solves that problem. I still got a little more work to do on this uh, that I'll handle with media queries but for now I just wanted to go ahead and make this video while it's fresh on my mind. Alright so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the HTML markup. You can pause the video and get this. I'll leave the code snippets at my website as well. So you can just visit visit my website. Let's put this in here you'll see that first I created a wrapper to go around all my columns I created three columns and I get my wrapper class get my columns of class of call and call one two and three you don't need call one two and three I'm just doing that for coloring purposes you'll see here in a moment so go ahead and save that and we have our design as you would expect Alright, second thing we're going to do is we're going to add the old fashioned way of creating responsive columns where the challenge is with vertical heights. And we're going to add that right here. So we've added our responsive uh, column here. We put a float left, we give them a width of 20%. I give some padding so the text to get off the borders. And then what I used a second column classes for I give colors and you'll notice I have column one has one line column two has two lines column three has a few extra lines right so we're gonna look and this is the way it looks right now and as you can see we have a problem with the vertical heights already okay one way to address this that will work okay on your bigger devices is to add a minimum and maximum height so I'm going to do that right now we'll add this right here let's say that we'll refresh our browser and there we go that solves a problem for your bigger displays, but watch what happens when you start shrinking it down. I'm going to the max height on this column. 
these two are still remaining at the min height because that's all they need right so like I said you could those solutions of CSS tricks will probably work on your particular situation they didn't work on mine but I have a feeling it has to do with the way I have things positioned on the website with absolute positioning I'm not 100% sure on that but I think that's the issue but anyhow you could use the old CSS tricks but look at this watch how simple and easy this is if you remember we created a wrapper around of our all of our stuff and we gave our wrapper a class watch this I'm gonna remove the float right I'm gonna remove the minimax heights we'll put those back in a, in a little bit but watch this this is how and let's go back just to look see that we're back the way we were we're stacked because we removed the float and then we removed the minimax height so it's taking up whatever space it needs right watch how simple this is you're going it's going to blow your mind remember my wrapper class dot wrapper display flex save I put that on the parent element my wrapper element right watch this boom that easy watch this how about that, huh? How about that? One little CSS to the parent element solves all your vertical uh, problems with columns. That just blew my mind. Now we'll put the minimax width back in. I just just because I want to show you something. fresh and you'll see how my text overflowed so flex does not handle your overflows you still have to put overflow hidden if you want to cut that off right So I will. Just wanted to show you that it's not going to handle your overflow for you. But you know, technically, I don't have overflow at all on on my buttons, on my boxes, on the website because I figured out the math and I know what I need. After I do my media queries, that everything will be all right. So you know, you have, you still have to use overflow hidden. It's not going to take care of your overflow problems for you. Now, here's a couple web kits that you probably should include, even though the latest browsers don't require it. You probably should include that up here on your parent element, or these two web kits. Uh, web kit Flex and Microsoft Flexbox. So those are the two web kits that you probably should use for older versions. I, I believe Microsoft Internet Explorer 10s officially started supporting uh, Flexbox. So I guess 9, maybe, maybe 8, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure on the web kits. But I include them just because I read that you should include them, to be honest with you. Now, I don't, this, yeah, I'm completely new to to a flex box so I don't know everything there is to know but I do remember a little bit from that video you can I really encourage you to watch that video if you want to know more because he goes into real de good detail flex box handles a whole lot more than just vertical column heights it can handle your entire display it can handle reordering of boxes it's just it's amazing what flex box can do now that I have a reason to go learn it that's what I'm gonna be doing after I get done with this website most likely is spending some time learning Flexbox. If this has helped you, how about giving me a like or subscribing or leaving a comment? I'd appreciate it. 
Again, I got free video tutorials for all kinds of stuff to do web and graphic design at my website, skeeters71.com.